Uh, set of speakers you'll hear. First of all, of course, the President of the Russian Federation. Uh, and I think I speak for all in the room when I say, President Putin, that we're grateful that you have so consistently over these 12 years taken time from your schedule uh, to meet with a group like this. It has to be unusual. I think those of us from other countries recognize that no other national leader does this kind of thing. Vladimir Putin, and welcome to all of you to this, the final uh, session of the Valdai Discussion Club this year. And it's on the theme of, as we see here, new rules or no rules. And I am uh, Seamus Milne. I'm, the, uh, I'm a journalist on The Guardian in London, and I'm going to co-moderate this session Dominic has uh, described the Ukrainian crisis as uh, the reason for uh, the deterioration of international relations uh, that, that we're seeing. But uh, the crisis in Ukraine, while it has contributed uh, to that uh, trend, it was not the initial reason. It was uh, itself a result of this disbalance in international relations and in the, in the global architecture. As for the reasons of that, uh, our colleagues uh, have uh, spoken about that at length, but I, I do see this disbalance of international relations as the, the main, the prime reason for, um, for, for these developments. We will talk about uh, elections or energy supplies to Ukraine and to Europe, uh, uh, if you wish. We will, we will discuss all that later on. But uh, first I would like to react uh, to Volgang's uh, words that he's an optimist. Uh, some people are also pessimists. I've already um, told you this uh, old joke. Uh, it's, a bit, uh, it's a bit harsh, but I still want to tell you. There is this joke about a pessimist and uh, an optimist. Uh, a pessimist uh, drinks some cognac and says, hmm, it smells like a cockroach. Uh, and uh, an optimist uh, catches a cockroach, uh, sniffs it and says, hmm, smells like brandy. I would prefer to be a pessimist uh, drinking brandy than an optimist uh, smelling cockroaches. Even though, of course, optimists uh, usually have a better time in life, but our overall purpose uh, is not to go hard on alcohol and to, to have a, a decent uh, lifestyle. But to that end, we need to jointly address crisis uh, and uh, challenges and, uh, and establish uh, mechanisms for jointly responding to, uh, for, for, for interaction to jointly respond to global issues. Thank you. Thanks very much. I'll open it up to um, questions uh, from the audience, but if I might take the opportunity of, of asking the first question um, to President Putin. Um, we've, we've had this discussion about optimism and pessimism, and the president set out his preference for a system of global rules and, uh, and a new uh, era of global governance. Now, uh, it's an attractive uh, prospect, but in, in the light of recent events, it doesn't look a very plausible one, certainly in the short term. Um, we've, we've all talked about the breakdown of the global order, and President Putin has talked about the threat of multiplying conflicts if that continues. Uh, the two questions in, in one which I'd like to ask is, first of all, whether uh, you consider, President Putin, Russia's own actions in Ukraine and Crimea um, over the past few months to be a response to that breakdown of rules and a sort of example of a no rules order. 
And the second part of the question is really um, whether what's taken place, this global breakdown uh, of rule system, does that signal, um, from Russia's point of view, a shift in Russia's global position? It's been said here in the past couple of days that Russia can't lead in the, uh, in the current global order, but it can decide who leads. And I wondered whether that's your own view. I would ask you to rephrase your second question. What, what was your second question, actually? The, the point is that, uh, that it's been said here that, uh, that Russia can't aspire to a, a leading position in the world, given the circumstances in the aftermath of the collapse of the Soviet Union and so on, uh, but that, that it can decide who will be the leader, and that there might be a shift in Russia's global position and orientation as a result of this global breakdown. The speculation is about, you know, as you mentioned yourself, relations with the Far East and a new system of global alliances around that. Russia has never changed its orientation. We are a, a country of a traditional, traditional tastes. Uh, we are oriented toward cooperation and toward a joint search of solutions. We don't presume for um, we don't presume to be global leaders. We don't aspire for global leadership. This uh, argument that Russia seeks global domination, that is just false. We don't, like I said, we not demand a special role for us. We just believe that all international players uh, should respect each other's interests. So we are ready to respect our counterparts' interests, but we would like to see similar interests for our opinions, for our attitude. We have expressed our opinions on the situation in the Middle East, uh, on the Iranian nuclear program, on the North Korean uh, issue on uh, global terrorism, global cri cyber crime, or drug trafficking. We have never changed our priorities. We have ne never altered our priorities on the in these areas, uh, even uh, notwithstanding some unfriendly action by our Western counterparts uh, uh, initiated and, and led by the United States. Uh, that has never made us uh, change anything in our behavior or in our, in our attitude. But of course, everything has its own boundaries. And uh, I do believe that if Russia were forced to change its policies uh, by some external factors, that, that could be possible. But so far, as, as, uh, as long as we don't have uh, uh, this uh, extraordinary situation, this emergency situation, we are not planning to do anything like that. As for Russia's actions in Crimea, I have uh, said that, n n that many times, but uh, I can repeat it uh, if that is uh, 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 if it's, ne it's necessary. The UN Charter, in its uh, very first article, provides for uh, the right of nations to self-determination. Uh, and uh, that is actually proclaimed uh, to be the purpose uh, of existence of uh, the United Nations. And uh, I don't see why the residents uh, of Crimea uh, cannot be entitled to that right, uh, same as the residents of Kosovo. Uh, why is it that, you know, in one case uh, you call a spade a spade and uh, in another case you don't? Uh, we, will we will never agree to this difference in, in approach. And then no one ever pays attention to that, but I will specifically point you to this fact. What has happened uh, in uh, Crimea is, first of all, initially, there was a coup d'etat in Kiev. No one actually calls it that way, but that was uh, so obviously an armed uh, revolt, an armed uprising, a coup d'etat. In some regions, uh, the people did not understand what was going on, and in other regions, people got scared. They got scared of uh, radical nationalists uh, coming to power, including uh, some of uh, the neo-Nazis. They were afraid uh, for their future, for their families, and they started uh, reacting accordingly. In Crimea, people carried out a referendum. I would like to point you to the fact that in Crimea, <coughs> uh, 
It was not nearly Russia announcing that there was a referendum in Crimea. It was a, an absolutely legitimate representative uh, governing body, the parliament of Crimea, that took the decision uh, on holding a referendum. And it was actually elected several years ago in accordance with Ukrainian law, way before the recent events. And it was based on that very referendum, same as in Kosovo. Crimea issued the, its declaration of independence and applied to the Russian Federation for accession. No matter what they say, no matter how they look for shortcomings, uh, they, they look for flaws with uh, uh, that referendum and with that decision, they are unable to actually find anything. The UN court stated clearly that the agreement of supreme for, uh, authorities, uh, that was its decision on Kosovo, that uh, the central authorities' uh, uh, reaction is not necessary for um, a territory to proclaim its independence. That was uh, its verdict as regards Kosovo. And uh, I keep thinking back to what uh, people used to say about that in ancient times. Uh, if you remember this, uh, this aphorism, what Jupiter is entitled to, uh, an ox is not. But we cannot agree to that. We cannot agree to those rules. An ox might not be entitled to something like that, but let me tell you, the bear is not asking anyone for permission. The bear is considered a strong and a very traditional um, uh, animal. Um, the bear does not seek to travel to other uh, places, to, to migrate to other parts of the world. But at the same time, the bear will not give up uh, its taiga to anyone, will not surrender its taiga. Now, we all uh, have experts gathered here, and we all act and talk like diplomats. So let's talk like professionals. Uh, what happened in the world was the former bipolar system, which included the Soviet Union once, fell apart. Soviet, the Soviet Union was uh, no longer, was history. All the rules uh, that had existed previously were created, were, were developed uh, for uh, this bipolar system, even though the Soviet Union was dubbed uh, uh, a third world country with nuclear missiles. That could be true, but it, it did have a lot of missiles. And it had uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, prominent political leaders, such as Nikita Khrushchev, who used to bang his uh, uh, shoe on the podium in the United Nations. Uh, and, you know, the Western leaders would think, you know, we, we better not mess with those people. What if they actually do shoot uh, their missile at us, you know? Once the Soviet Union was history, the West was tempted to act however it wanted. They thought they didn't have to take uh, Russia's uh, interests into consideration anymore. They believed Russia had uh, experienced transition since, um, since being the Soviet Union. So they, they decided they were free to do whatever they wanted. No holds barred. And uh, it was exactly what Dominic spoke of, Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan, and before that, Yugoslavia. Was that all in accordance with international law? Why are you telling us tales? So what we have is that some, some countries are free to do whatever they want, and we have no right to protect the interests of Russian speakers in Crimea. It will not be that way. And I would like everyone to get an understanding of this. Would, uh, I would like everyone to embrace this fact. They need to get over their illusions and attempt to make the, war, the, entire, the whole world toe the line. You need to adopt a system of mutual respect for one another. It has been there for ages. All you need to do is just, just acknowledge it. We realize the world has changed and we're ready to adjust accordingly, but we do not, we cannot permit our interests to be fully ignored. We will never allow that. Does